Hey folks, long time no see. Uh, thank you for sticking with the channel in my long absences. I do appreciate it. Uh, I do have a couple projects in the works, and one of them might need a new magnetic actuator because I seem to be out of the kind that I need. So I made one, and then I was like, well, maybe you should film that. I had done a DIY magnetic actuator video years ago, but removed it because I didn't really like the way it turned out. But I figured this good a time as any to try it again. Um, if you've clicked on this video, you probably already know what an actuator is, but for anyone uninitiated, I'll just give a brief rundown before I start making one. So all you can just think of it as a servo in any other uh, RC plane or car, except much more simple. It's just a coil of wire with a magnet in it. Um, these ones are fancy. They have little hinges built in uh, with control arms. So you can, this is called a remote actuator. So you could actually mount this inside your fuselage and then run push rods from here to your control surfaces to make it a little more clean build. The other kind that are pretty normal is this kind. It's an in-hinge actuator, and that's called that because it sits in the hinge. Uh, but the coil is mounted directly to the fuselage, and then you'd stick a little magnet on the rudder, and then the magnet sits inside the coil. And, uh, yeah, give it power, and it turns your rudder. Um, these don't have any centering. Um like a servo would with a potentiometer, you're actually using either just the the tape to give you your centering or the airflow over the control surface to give you your centering, but they can be proportional, assuming the receiver that you're using is providing that kind of signal, but basically more power means uh, more deflection. Back in the day, there were some that were, it was either on or off, and those made flying much more difficult. Looking at you, wattage microflyer, I guess this is another kind. This is sort of an in-hinge, but it's got a hinge built in. So you could mount this, uh, I guess it'd be like this. And then you mount the rudder directly to this part. And then you don't have to worry about trying to get the magnet perfectly centered inside the coil and everything else. Just makes it a little easier. These do of course come with a little extra weight penalty because of the plastic. Um, whereas this is about as light as it possibly gets. And as you can see, there ain't much to that coil. It's pretty small. Back in the day, uh, you had to be a little careful of how hot the coil was because you could run the risk of burning that channel out. But uh, the receivers today like this one, which are getting hard to find, I've never had a problem. In fact, I, I don't think I've ever burnt out a channel from too hot of a coil. And so, I mean, you can get fancy and do like, figure out the gauge of the wire. This happens to be like 40 gauge. Um, and then, you know, the length and figure out how many wraps to figure out how many wraps you need to get the right resistance, but I've never done that and it's never been a problem, so not too big of an issue. Uh, but the way I usually make these is just as simple as the actuator itself. I use a candle and, um, where is my screwdriver? A screwdriver, flat blade, and, uh, if you want to get fancy or lazy, depending on how you look at it, a drill and all I do is chuck the candle chuck the candle and then plug it in probably and then very gently very slowly you press the screwdriver into the candle and it'll carve out a perfect little channel this is one of the actuators I made earlier and um, so the width of your screwdriver will determine the width of the uh, coil itself and how deep you drive the screwdriver in will determine your inside diameter. Um, you don't want to go too far because there is, of course, a wick in the middle. And if you go too far, it'll break. Guess how I know. But yeah, slowly, slowly. That should be about good enough. Can you see that? And then, whoops. Uh, take your wire. I got this coil of wire. Get out of here. Um, the dollar store around here has, it's an electromechanical watt or clock. So you need to find one with a battery, but has an actual dial with actual hands. Crack that thing open and you will find a coil just like this. 
this is almost a lifetime's worth of wire so and for i think i got it for like six bucks so pretty cheap uh you want to start with can does this even show up can you see that it's kind of like hair um it's a little stronger than hair maybe but still really fragile uh, but you want to give yourself a nice extra bit of length so you don't make your coil and then find out you don't have enough length to actually re reach your receiver. And then do a couple wraps by hand just to get it started. And for your other end, it's good to keep it wrapped around the chuck, otherwise it'll get caught up and eventually end up snagging and breaking on something. And when you do the first handful of wraps, uh, you're going to want to put glue down on it. Because if you don't, the inside, the inside diameter coils, or those, those first few wraps on the inside, those will eventually come loose. And all it takes is one little strand of wire to hang up the, the magnet in there, and then your coil doesn't work. And uh, yeah, so... It's really helpful to use thin CA because that really soaks through all the layers and all the wraps. I don't have any, unfortunately, but thin CA will work in a pinch. I think that should be good. And then I'll just put a little bit of weight on this wire so it doesn't try to unravel while I get the glue. And, you know, it's not really a bigger the gob the better the job kind of situation because glue is surprisingly heavy but you also don't want to be too sparse on it or you'll run into problems later so i just put some on the end of a poking utensil and then i can rub rub that in there and that'll at least start to hold them in place And then hit it with just a drop of kicker. Make it dry immediately. And then if you get the coil just right, it'll unwind as you're going, but it will hang up and you wanna be careful when that happens, otherwise you'll break it and then you have to start over because soldering an extra bit of wire to the wire that's broken is not a fun or easy task. Maybe just a little more. That should do. I probably should have added some glue in between there somewhere but uh oops i don't want to do that but it should be fine again that's where the thin ca really comes into its own because it'll soak through all those windings and make everything one nice solid piece and then hit it with some kicker again Again, give yourself some extra length. And then you can unchuck the candle. Get this out of there. And then to get it off, um, you can uh, get some boiling water and put it in the boiling water and that'll melt the wax. But the other option <clears throat> is I just use an, an, an X-Acto knife that probably needs its blade change, but it's just wax, so. And I just cut really close to the edge, like so. And then you can just pick off the edges. And then with a very gentle, boy, I did not that was a lot less wraps than I was meaning to put on there. This is where counting your wraps actually can come in handy, um, but that still should be fine. But to get it off, 
squeeze gently and then rotate the candle and it'll eventually come free. Don't squeeze too hard because you will smash this coil right into a nice oval as opposed to a circle. Guess how I know. Um, and yeah, there you go. A little bit of extra excess glue and wax on it, but nothing that can't be cleaned off. And it looks like those inside coils are actually holding in place. If you find that some of the coils are... Oops, see, there's one that just came undone. That's not good. When that happens, try to get it back in place, or at least out of the way, so the magnet won't interfere with it, or it won't interfere with the magnet, and then just give it a little, little bit of glue. Little bit. And there you go, brand new actuator uh, for almost free. Uh, as far as magnets, most of the magnets I have have come from actuators like these that eventually break because what will happen is one of the wires will break free right at the coil itself. And actually this one, yeah, that's a perfect example. That only has one wire coming out of it, which means the other wire broke off somewhere right on the coil and uh unless you have far more patience than me and probably a magnifying glass or a microscope getting that wire off of there is just about impossible so this coil is bad because yeah need more than one wire but that means i'll be able to cannibalize uh this plastic piece i can make my own coil that will fit on there and that way i can still use the plastic and the magnet or if i wanted to i could just take the magnet out Otherwise, you can go onto eBay and just do a search for like one by one millimeter magnets and you will find a, a plethora of them for pretty cheap. But yeah, that's it. And then, like I said, this will, that would fit on the plane just like that. And that's it. Am I forgetting anything? No, I, uh, I think that's it. If there's anything that I didn't really cover well enough to understand or you got any questions, feel free to let me know. Actually, let's weigh this thing real quick. So one of these fancy magnet, or wow, fancy actuators, 0.36 grams, the slightly less fancy version, little bit lighter, and then just the coil. Yeah. So you are saving quite a bit of weight. Even if you were to throw a magnet on there, it's not going to change much, and it's still going to be a lot lighter than those. The only difference is, you know, you won't have the control horns, which means if you're trying to make a really proper-looking plane, having a coil just stuck to the back of your plane kind of ruins it. So if you want to get fancy, those are the way to go, if, you're, if you can take the weight penalty. But otherwise, um, yeah, I think that's it. Like I said, if you got any questions or anything, let me know down let me know down in the comments and uh thanks for watching